Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel Trading Secrets. This channel is for entertainment purposes only. For those of you who do not know, my name is Ali. I have over 20 years experience teaching accounting, economics, business and law. Through this channel, I'll be providing some stock analysis and a quick update on the million dollar challenge. So if anybody's not aware of this, this is a journey of an investment of $1,000 to a return of $1 million over a period of three years using a strategy called compound return investing. So the objective is try to get 201 trades, each with an average return of 3.5%. It's not 201 consecutive trades. We do take into account losses. So for further details about how to join us for less than $9 a month, information is available in the description below. In today's video, we're going to be looking at a legal update to Rosa's case against FINRA. And there has been uh, an opposition to FINRA's motion to dismiss. So we're going to have a look at uh, a breakdown of some of the key points. So stay tuned for that. Before we make a start, let's have a quick look at a headline from Reuters. And we can see here the US dollar falters as the Fed outlook weighs, focusing on next week's inflation data. So next week's inflation data could be huge uh, for the markets. And hopefully if there is some positive news, we will see uh, a strong recovery and bounce back. If we have a look at the heat map for today, uh, certainly uh, significant amounts of red here with technology, communication, uh, healthcare, financial, almost all sectors down. Um, I think except uh, consumer defensive sector uh, and most stocks deeply in the red. Google has had just had probably I think the two biggest significant drops in single days uh, after a very very um, small reason in my opinion which was the, the AI uh, demonstration glitch so I do expect a, a good bounce back from uh, Google uh, going forward especially as they look to rectify that error. Let's have a look at some uh, important reactions and updates with regard to FINRA from uh, John Birder here. Uh, so shout out first of all to Cable who's tagged in John Birder stating here we have some concerned bystanders that think they know more than the people actually inside. I call them that politely because they have no position and obviously are appearing now to cause problems. So maybe these people are short. So uh, Kubiko has stated here, upon review, I think FINRA did a great thing by halting MMTLP on December the 9th. Record date for the spin was uh, December the 12th. So um, with T plus two settlement, December 8th was the last day the security had any value whatsoever. So this person obviously is another imbecile. The person does not know what happened and certainly has not read the uh, background information in terms of what happened. So John has chipped in and stated here, most people are not aware that FINRA mandated and change the corporate action. So that is true. And I've read that myself in uh, Rose's um, uh, court filing today. Uh, so FINRA did uh, make some changes there. Everyone knew that the last trading day was the 12th via our S1. We allowed for T plus two as the 14th was the issue date. Further broker de uh, dealers can settle be be business to business without DTC even after the last day according to AST. Uh, so yeah, that is certainly true. And uh, if we have a look at one more follow up here uh, in terms of what's happening in the case uh, right now with Rosa, what uh, John has stated here is in his opinion, FINRA had six months to fix the problem. They did nothing, even looking the other way as the problem may have been too big to fix. So they let everything trade. Uh, they could have um, fixed the problem much, much earlier uh, rather than the way they did it, which was sudden, abrupt and without communication uh, or consultation or uh, discussion. So if Rosa gets discovery um, we and or if we find another way to get all the facts, the whole thing blows wide open. So discovery is something that FINRA 100% do not want. If there is discovery, uh, in my opinion, FINRA are finished. So what I'm now going to do is break down uh, Rosa's uh, response to uh, FINRA's motion to dismiss in 12 uh, points broken down. So I'm going to uh, have a look at these 12 points now. Uh, so before I get started, again, as I said at the beginning, uh, th uh, this is just purely for entertainment and not financial advice. And on this occasion, it's also not legal advice. So this is just purely my opinion and reaction. So go ahead and have a look at the filing yourself and uh, come up with your own opinions. But this is what I uh, am reading into it as a layperson of law. So number one, there was a short position according to Cromwell Coulson, aka RH. So go ahead and work out what RH is. Uh, it is one of his um, uh, pre other no names that he's known by. He is the CEO of OTC Markets and not a single shareholder has received Nextbridge Hydrocarbon shares since the halt. So that's uh, something that is stated in the court document. Uh, obviously, people have received them uh, before. 
uh, but right now if you have a look at most almost all the shares are held in street name the brokers uh, and dealers are using delay tactics by obviously using extremely high prices um, and, and preventing that uh, transfer to take place so everybody right now as far as i'm aware still have shares with the brokers who are fudging around number two Coulson, aka RH, also stated he wanted MMTLP to be publicly tradable, where it was none of his business, but he chipped in the other day with lots and lots of tweets, lots of posts. And remember, this is a person who gave credit to Sam Bankman Freed for doing an excellent job on the OTC. So he gave credit to Sam Bankman Freed um, and he used him as a great example. So this person, Coulson, really has great credibility. Uh, and he's, uh, we all can also see in the, in the court filing, it states that has a financial interest in reducing the obligations of short sellers. So what we are seeing here is obviously uh, Mr. Coulson uh, is going to financially benefit if the short sellers obligations are reduced. So uh strong suggestion here that he's a short i'm not sure how tall he is maybe he's five foot three but he is definitely a short he is uh, looking to benefit uh financially from this and that's why he's tweeted so why is he uh, coming out tweeting like a parrot at times uh desperate uh, frustrated angry trying to get a response and also trying to get people on board to say look let's make this tradable on the otc uh, I think on behalf of all MMTLP uh, shareholders, I can certainly tell him to get lost. Number three, private companies are not eligible for shorting. So again, the judge needs to be aware of this. The judge needs to be uh, clear that this is against financial regulations. And I myself am very surprised that the SEC have not stepped in. This is a breach of financial regulations. This needs to be dealt with. Uh, we are going to uh, target them uh, next week. So um, uh, uh, FINRA, SEC, uh, you need to look at the regulations of this and private companies should not be eligible for shorting, but that is the case currently. Number four, shareholders cannot hold a meeting as shareholders are not yet ascertained. So we're not, we don't know who the shareholders are. We don't know how many they are. One of the key reasons for this, uh, there is a um, potentially huge, huge number of um, synthetic shares. Uh, uh, so how can we have a, a shareholder meeting? So if we want to have a shareholder meeting to, let's say, decide who are we going to use our, as our new auditors? Just want one example of a shareholder meeting. Well, right now we can't do that. It is a mess. Who's created the mess? Is it FINRA? Is it the SEC? They are the ones who've messed about with the dates. We are the shareholders. We need to have a meeting. We can't. Number uh, five, a court should not dismiss unless satisfied that the complaint cannot say, state any facts that would entitle the plaintiff to relief. So what we're saying here in terms of what Rosa, Rosa's response is that the court cannot dismiss any complaint without looking at the facts. Uh, so obviously you have to look at everything on a case by case basis. Uh, and if the plaintiff is getting looking to get relief, uh, the court needs to look at that. So remember uh, what FINRA are mistakenly assuming is that we are looking, or should we say Rosa is looking for financial compensation. She's looking for cash. She's not looking for cash. She's looking for uh, the situation um, to be corrected. She's looking for the two days to be given back. She's looking for the shorts to close their positions. She's looking for synthetic shares to be bought up. So it's not a financial uh, request. So FINRA, you need to stop suggesting that. Number six, uh, a private plaintiff can recover an, on an antitrust claim which stems from a competition, reducing aspects or effects of the defendant's behavior. So uh, Rosa is a uh, private plaintiff. So uh, there is an antitrust claim and this stem stems from competition, reducing aspects or effects of the uh, defendant's behavior. So there's, a, there's an argument here that she does have a right to a claim. Uh, and she does have a right to pursue this uh, and FINRA also in terms of suggesting that they have immunity certainly is not the case so in on the topic of immunity number seven absolute immunity is rare and exceptional in character so that's what FINRA are claiming they are saying we are in effect they are saying we're above the law uh, and that really is rare it's probably uh, applicable to diplomats uh, and I don't think FINRA are diplomats number eight 
courts must examine the invocation of absolute immunity on a case-by-case -case basis. So this is a decision for the court. This is not a decision for FINRA. So the judge has now got the power to say, are FINRA, do FINRA have absolute immunity? And the judge also has the pay, power to say, uh, do FINRA not have absolute immunity? So it's down to the judge. Uh, it's not down to FINRA. FINRA are saying we have it. They're saying we, you know, we believe we have it, but it, the, the power is with the judge. Number nine, claims are not mute until next bridge hydrocarbons is issued to shareholders. So they are saying it's useless uh, because everything is done. Well, if it was done, we would have our shares. Uh, so FINRA are very, very much ill-informed. Uh, if they think of all the shares have been added up, tallied and correctly identified with the correct amount of numbers in AST, uh, then they may have an argument, but that is certainly not the case. We know the whole thing is a mess. Number 10, uh, FINRA set the ex-dividend date and uh, effective dates. There is a link there to prove that in the, in the court filing. So again, FINRA and the judge can go ahead and check that out. We also know that FINRA changed the dates with the U3 halt. Uh, so FINRA knew about this in terms of what we've just seen with the um, tweet from George, uh, sorry, with the tweet from John Birder that they had months and months but did nothing until the very, very last uh, possible opportunity they had. Uh, number 11, motion to dismiss. Court cannot accept conclusions of FINRA. Again, see case history provided. So the FINRA are assuming, well, we said this, do it. We said jump, jump. We say skip, skip. Well, no, it doesn't work like that, FINRA. Uh, everything is done on a case-by-case -case basis. So in the previous response that FINRA gave, they were kind of assuming that you know, uh, this is not the court's business. That was the general theme of, of, of their response to saying to the judge, to the court, just dismiss this case. It's got nothing to do with you. Uh, we are a law unto ourselves. Uh, so again, uh, Rosa has uh, responded here, but to say that the court cannot accept these conclusions. Uh, and the final thing I'm going to summarize with is um, there's also an additional statement here in the filing with regard to books inspection request under Delaware law. So this books uh, inspection request could be also seen as a form of um, obviously getting all the information that um, uh, Discovery we're talking about here, getting all the information that FINRA have. So FINRA have full evidence uh, whereas Rosa, uh, Richard Hoffman, all ourselves, we are fighting a boxing fight against FINRA uh, with no, you know, we're blindfolded, one arm behind our back and they, uh, the referee's also in their pocket. But we're still there. We're still fighting uh, because obviously we have determination to succeed. Similar to Muhammad Ali when he was blinded uh, by the water in the, one of the Sonny Liston fights. Those of you are um, uh, aware of that history and Muhammad Ali did come back to win. So uh, we need to support Rosa fully in this. Uh, and I do expect a, a judge with common sense to see through all the arguments uh, that are very, very shabby presented by FINRA. So great uh, response here by FINRA. Very strong, uh, especially the first two pages. So go ahead and check that uh, filing out. And finally, just to finish off on the theme of discovery, shout out here to Richard Hoffman, who did tweet a few days ago to say, uh, with regard to his initial discovery uh, request, uh, with regard to production of documents, seeking 35 categories of documents, this has now been served. So Richard is uh, serving this uh, to Fidelity, as far as I know. Uh, so we are still waiting for an update from this, uh, but hopefully uh, this uh, produces something uh, interesting. I know John Birder is watching this very, very carefully, uh, but any form of discovery in terms of the data, the information that the broker dealers have, also that FINRA has, will certainly uh, provide us with some uh, great ammunition. And finally, thank you very much for watching. Please stay tuned.